Hi, welcome to Write by Number. Um, this webinar is going to be on how to use Write by Number with multiple students. Uh, it's really easy to use in a classroom setting with co-ops, with a family, one, two, however many students you want. You can use it across the whole school. So you could just be using it with one student and they just, because it's mastery based, you're just going through the each assignment that's already been, it's in the student book and the student is completing that assignment. And then when they're done with that, they go on to the next one. So that's easy if it's just one. But what happens when you have two children, let's say? Well, what I do, if, because they all start at the very beginning, what I do is I teach stage one. And then I teach stage two. And the second there's a split of skill. So all of a sudden one child, oh, they really need to stay at stage one a little bit longer. Then that child stays there and the next child moves on. Um, grading is super easy because they have to do every assignment to perfection. So it's always an A. Unless you have a student who maybe has a learning disability or they reach a point of frustration and you know it's not going to go any further that day. So you can give them a B and then they just repeat the assignment the next day. They can't go to the next assignment until they complete the one that they're on and they have to get an A on it. So that's just simple tracking, especially in the first few stages. It's pretty much the same assignment every day. So I have some sample notebooks. So what will happen is each student will have their student book and they will have a notebook, or like a college. <laughs> that's funny, my green screen kind of took over. Oh, it's not gonna let me do it. This is a notebook. Here, now you have green in the background, right? Okay, so um, this is just a spiral bound. That's, that's what we want is a spiral bound notebook because you wanna keep these pages together because you're gonna to wanna to be able to refer back to them. And let me give you an example of that. So you will have a child who will write, I don't know if it's gonna let me do this. It, they, they will write day after day the same things. And this child doesn't have dates on the side. Sometimes I had to write that in. Um, and so they do that day after day after day after day. And they have page after page after page after page until they can do that kind of paragraph perfectly or near perfectly. And they stay there, right? If you went through my um, overview seminar, they stay there until they can do it near perfectly. So they do that. And so you want it all in a notebook because in the later stages, they have to refer back to a previous assignment in order to do the one that they're on. So it, the assignment I might say, take one stage eight power graph that you wrote and turn it into a stage nine essay. And so they need to be able to flip back in their notebook and pick one of the paragraphs they did. Otherwise they have to rewrite a whole paragraph. So it's really, it's really behooves them to keep track of everything. They can also look back and get ideas about things. Um, oh, what did I write for that? Another thing is, right, so if they're learning a sentence pattern and they have the page, I'm trying to cover up personal details here. I think that's, I think that's it. <laughs> um, you know, they have to write the sentence pattern and they have to write a paragraph using the sentence pattern. And so it becomes their own personal reference to go back. So they don't necessarily have to even open the book sometimes if they wanna refer back to what they did before. And because those are perfect sentence patterns because you've graded it and they got an A on it, they know that those are good models to follow. So basically each child will have their own notebook. So then what happens is when you go around, um, you have, um, if it's just a few students, and this is in my book, this is an assignment chart, okay? Actually, I have the blank assignment chart. I'm gonna share my screen with you. And now you can see, this is an Adobe file at the moment. So you can see that we have a blank assignment chart. And of course, you can make your own. This is not anything fancy. Um, and here you put the child's name. 
see if I can do this with my cursor, with my mouse. Okay, so you put the child's name here and the assignment here. So if they're on stage six, assignment one, you do six one. You put the date, and then when the child does it, you just put an A. Or let's say this child had to rewrite it. So this is stage six assignment one, same assignment, the same date. Sorry, this is really messy. And then I just do a little rewrite. I put an R right there to remind myself they need to rewrite it. So if they're doing assignments once a week, next week when you come back to that, you know they're on stage six assignment one, they were supposed to rewrite their assignment. You check it. If they did it right, you cross out the R and you put an A. And this is what it looks like. Let me close that and clear the annotations, clear all drawings. Okay, so you can see this is what it might look like for stage six. So you're gonna put a label at the top of each column with the child's name. Then you have all the assignments down the side. Then you put the date and then you can put each of the grades in there. And that's an easy way to keep track. Now, the downside of doing it on paper is you better not lose your paper. So when I was a teacher in a classroom, I would have one sheet for each child. I mean, one well, I'm so sorry, one sheet for each class. And they were very small columns. They were very tiny. And so I would go around. Um, and so at the beginning of the period, um, and we always, I always graded, their uh, right by number on Mondays. Um, I think it was Mondays most of the time. It was journaling day. And so they would have an assignment they were working on. And then they would set their right by number up in the upper corner of their desk. And I would walk around with my clipboard and I could see exactly which assignment they were on because it was on my list. And if I had kids in more than one stage, I had a sheet of paper for each stage. And I would just flip to the um, flip to the right stage and I would be able to mark off uh, what they had done and then I because I was in the classroom I would transfer that to the grade book um, whether that was digital or on uh, paper it was on paper at the time all right so that's how you do it and and what happens is because the student book is set up for the student to basically teach him or herself it is a self-driven program. It's not a lot of administration from the teacher. At the lower stages, you do need to get them going, but your job as the teacher is mostly just to make sure they understand the lesson. Um, you can read through it with them if you need to, and you can do that to all the students. As long as they're in the same group, you can read through it together, you can practice together, you can grade together. But the second they split off, then you have to go to individual tracking. And so you're grading a different assignment for each student. Now, another way I've done this, and this I did with um, homeschool co-ops, is I would have, I, I actually used a three ring binder. Here's another option. And what I did was I would have a sheet, and this is old, and I only had a few students that year. I have a sheet for each stage. And all the kids were in the upper stages. So this was stage eight and up. And I was marking off assignments and dates, and there was carryover from year to year. And of course, you know, you kind of develop your own system. I'm showing you how I did it because this is what worked for me. If you don't like it, you could do it a different way. There's no law. But one of the things you are going to want to do, especially if you're sitting and grading a bunch of right by number at the same time, is you're going to want some references. So, in this is from the student book. This is a quick reference guide. So what I would do is I would make copies of this for my own personal use, okay, so that's legal. You're not copyright infringement. You make copies of this and stick those quick reference pages in your notebook so you can have a quick reference. When, so when you're grading sentence patterns, you can say, oh, what was the sentence pattern 16? You might not quite remember because you're not using it like the students are. You're not in it every day. They memorize them a lot faster than you do. Um, and then you go, you click, you flip to sentence pattern 16 and you say, oh yeah, that's what it is. And then you can look and see if they did it correctly. 
So having those references, you, could, you would also want to take with you the teacher book so that you have, and here's the, where are the, but it will have all the assignments in it. I'm trying to think, I don't think I have one set up for you to see in this, in this. but basically it'll have, um, it'll have all the assignments. Let me flip fast back to an assignment. So here you have, you have these assignments here. And if all those assignments are listed in the teacher book, and it will even tell you under each assignment how to grade it. So um, in the teacher book, I will tell you, like here it says, um, if you look down here, it says assignment one. The assignment is complete worksheet 11 on expletive construction. And then I tell you what you need to do to make sure that assignment happens. Um, and so if you have your teacher book and you have your little grade sheet, then it's super easy to administrate. Um, it's great for co-ops because you can, they have their own book, they can work out on their own at home. Mom or dad can grade at home and do a first editing pass, which is great because it's less work for you. And then by the time they come, they, you're just checking it off that they did it, you're doing any um, extra editing. Uh, especially if you're doing it for a co-op, you're probably an Englishy person if you're teaching writing. So it, it's, it's pretty easy to administrate. Same thing in your own home. If you have multiple children, you enable the same um, things. You, um, you just keep everybody going at their own pace. You keep track of the assignment separately. And you just find a way to do that, whether that's on a sheet of paper, you can create something on your computer so you don't lose it. Uh, whatever you need to do to uh, keep track of that. So this program is actually ideal for these situations. Also, you can have multiple teachers across a school or a, a pos across a co-op doing the same thing. So no matter what English class they're in, no matter what uh, specific subject they're in, the teachers can be giving similar assignments. So a history teacher might say, hey, can you guys, you went in your right by number notebooks, write a one, two, three, two, three paragraph about um, oranges. And so that's what you would do. Um, it's very, very successful when you go through multiple grade levels. So if you're a teacher in one grade level and you know they're just going to pick up where they left off. So if you're a fourth grade teacher and next year the fifth grade teacher is going to pick up where each of those individual students left off. That's why they take their notebook with them. Oh, that one doesn't show up. Their notebook, they take this notebook with them and they can take that from class to class from year to year and it doesn't change and it stays really consistent. So there are schools um, who have in the past, the junior high and high school I taught at used it uh, for all across all seventh through 12th and everybody taught it and everybody used it in their subject matter as well. Just they didn't have to grade it as a write by number assignment, but they did grade it for um, structure. And it was really, they really enjoyed having that structure in place because it made it really easy for them to grade because a lot of them were not necessarily English people, uh, writing people. So it made their job easier. They felt much more comfortable assigning essays or short essays or paragraphs for the students to write because they knew exactly what they were gonna get. So that's how you use uh, Write My Number uh, with lots of kids. If you have any questions or concerns, you can contact me directly through writebynumber.com. And thanks for stopping by.